In this episode of Analog Diaries, we are using the famous Hasselblad X Pan and the Fujifilm TX1. <laughs> <laughs> Together with the crew of No Digital, that's Imke, and of course my friend and analog guru Ewald. We are hitting the streets of Gouda, where everything rolls like a roll of film. If you want to know how these cameras work or why they are so panoramically awesome, stay tuned. This video is brought to you by No Digital. So I'm shooting the TX1. Yep. You are shooting the X Pan One. Yeah. And we are using Ilford HP5 black and white film. That's right. What is so special about these cameras and about the aspect ratio? Well, as I mentioned before, they're all panoramic cameras. So they've got really long and like cinematic aspect ratios. And I believe the aspect ratio for these cameras is uh, 65 to 24. Um, so that means it's a six and a half centimeter wide um, negative you'll get over a normal 35 width. So it's, uh, it's really wide. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's cinematic, you know, as, yeah, so a AF as the teenagers say now. Um, <laughs> Which doesn't mean out of focus. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean out of focus. <laughs> so we are going to uh, show you how to load the film, how to use these cameras. They are very similar. Actually, uh, Fujifilm has made the X-Pan for Hasselblad, so they exactly. are basically the same. And the only difference is that the X-Pan has a different alloy, right? That's They're right, yeah, yeah. So the Fuji has a uh, titanium alloy and the X-Pan does not. All right. That's uh, that, hence the color difference as well. It's the only yeah. difference. The only difference. All right. As they want us to know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's uh, load some film. Let's do it. Let's go for it. So uh, we're shooting on HP5 today. Um, first, what we do is have to open the roll and get your little roll out. So out, open the camera. There's a little latcher that says open. Flip it up and then bang it upwards. So the back opens up. You can see the camera. You can see where the frame's going to be. It's massive. So we pull the film tab all the way up to where the film tip is supposed to be. So that's right over there. And then what we do is uh, close the camera and it should work uh, for us. So we should hear it going weep. And there we go. So you got a loaded X pan. Kind can the was do. So is it. Hope <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> So everything is quite different when you're shooting this panoramic aspect ratio. Yeah, definitely, yeah. You're very used to using some compositional technique like the rule of thirds yeah. and everything basically goes uh, out, the door. out of the door a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Um, how, do, how, do you, how do you frame your shots? So and how does the viewfinder work? So the viewfinder, it's, it's, um, uh, it's like a point and shoot camera basically. So you don't look through the lens. Um, it's a range finder technically. Uh, so what you see inside is um, a little yellow spot and in there is something that moves. So it moves around um, and you have to align those lines on top of each other and if that's the case then you've got a, an image that's in focus. Um, so it's a bit different, some people love it, some people hate it. Uh, Leica uses it as well. Um, Fuji is a big fan uh, of using it but um, yeah it's, it's quite different than using a, an SLR or a, or a zone metering camera basically yeah yeah and it yeah. is very nice because you eliminate a lot of uh, distractions uh, on the top and of the bottom of your well field of view exactly, basically yeah. yeah and then you just got this very wide uh, sheet and you you already look you already see it through the viewfinder what you're going to shoot uh, you see exactly what it is and the viewfinder is a little bit bigger than what you see in frame so you can see things moving into your frame as well so you can prepare for that or anticipate on it that's yeah. why uh, yeah that's why people love the rangefinder camera as well and yeah. let's take some nice cinematic shots yeah just took a little picture of the bridge so really wondering how that comes out and uh, yeah so let's go on let's have some fun <laughs> let's have some fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> Woo!
So we have been taking some photos. We have, yeah, yeah. What are you uh, looking for when, when using a camera uh, like this? So what I'm trying to do now is get two sort of images, two frames in one shot. So something that divides the picture in half. Um, so what you get is uh, a part of a building, for example, and then the opening of a building next to it and see people walking through. So we've got two interesting things um, that divide the image into. Cool. Yeah. At least I'm trying. <laughs> Is there a lot of uh, distortion from left to right with this uh, um, aspect ratio? There's always going to be a little bit of distortion, but it's made to not distort at all. So we know panoramas from the wider looks cameras, which have a, uh, a rotating lens. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it shoots and it, it rotates over a, a focal plane, basically. Um, that creates a ton of distortion. But these, they're, they're made to be as, as tight as possible. Because these are the lenses that are supposed to go on these. They're supposed to go on the cameras, yeah. 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 So they're, uh, they're supposed to go on these bodies and they're supposed to, you know, get a, you know, this, it's a hassle of that camera. So, it, and it's a, it's a Fuji camera, so they're not going to be, um, they're going to be perfect. Yeah. Or as close to perfect as they can be, yeah. 45 mil. 45 mil, yeah. F4. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, supposedly super sharp and awesome, so, yeah. We'll see you in the next we'll video. See you in the next video, yeah. yeah. Oh, what? That's a nice little <laughs> oh, wow. bridge. Oh, wow. Oh, thinking, my God. Oh, my that came out of nowhere. Oh, my God. That's if we planned it. <laughs> so, you already seen some of the photos that we are taking today. Not all of them, uh, because we are filming two videos today. And the second video, which will be out uh, at the same time or around somewhere close, yep. uh, as this video will be in the darkroom developing film. So, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Exactly. This is a good all the ins and outs. <laughs> this is a good moment to ask people to su subscribe, right? Please subscribe to Niels's channel. We have a new channel as well, Forno Digital as well, so subscribe to that as well. Check out our Instagram page as we if you've seen Imke's uh, taking care of that, so uh, it's going to be a lot more professional from now on and very aesthetically pleasing with mm -hmm. all the camera news and film news you uh, you desire. There you have it. There you go. A shameless plug. There you go. Always. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even care. <laughs> No, no, there's people coming. There's people coming. All right. Hold up. All right. <gasps> yeah. Couple. I'm stalking. There's a couple. Oh, All right. oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. Yes. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the winner of the day. <laughs> it's out of focus. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> Where's my Rico GR? <laughs> So I got five more frames left. Um, I've uh, shot through my roll, so it's time to load a new roll of film, I guess. I have uh, done a little bit of research and what I found on the forums and the discussions and the debates on the internet is that a lot of people are a little bit hesitant to buy an expensive camera like this because they say when they break, they are gone. Well, um, absolutely right. So the internals of the camera are computer driven, basically. So there's not much mechanical going on. Um, and as soon as these get wet or something goes wrong with them or they short circuit, um, there's no real way of replacing them now. You must be, you have to be very, very lucky in order to get that fixed. Um, however, these cameras were built to last and they were built to, um, you know, endure um, an entire life cycle of use. Um, so when they work, they, they do work and they work properly. Um, only thing I can do when buying one is make sure it's checked, make sure it's, uh, it's been certified. Um, so you don't have any surprises when you when you get one. I mean, it's a it's an expensive camera, so you have to you want to look out for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the other hand, you know, not everybody's going to buy this camera because of the price point. So people are usually specialized in either uh, landscape photography or they do cityscapes or they have a very specific thing in mind that they want to do with their um, with this camera when they buy it. So um, I believe that they'll make sure that they buy a good one. Yeah. yeah. It's clear that these cameras are not for everyone, however, we really liked using the X-Pan and the TX1 in the field. The panoramic aspect ratio makes you look for new and creative compositions, and the way the photos look is just amazing. It's like a cheat code to cool shots. 
I don't think this camera is just for landscape photographers. I could really see people use it for an interesting documentary series as well. I even took a street portrait, which came out pretty cool. Be sure to check out the next video, because then we are in the dark room to explain to you how to develop your own film. Thanks for watching. Peace. Peace. See you. It's better, so, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>